Hey guys, so I originally started this video to show the process of making some PVC frames to go around some windows or garage doors so you can mount some Christmas lights too. I didn't want to put a bunch of nail holes or use uh, hot glue to mount my lights. I wanted something that I could just take down quickly, fold up, put in the attic during the off season. So I went with PVC frames. It's pretty st straightforward construction, uh, just using half inch PVC and some elbows. Uh, you can see up here I use some 45 degree elbows. Obviously over there I use 90 degree elbows, but you just cut it to length, add the elbows, and we're all good. Now the window is basically just a friction fit. I don't have anything holding it to the house. Uh, the garage doors, since it's not a complete frame, I don't have anything at the bottom. I did buy some little self-adhesive uh, zip tie bases and they're just secured on the top and the sides with some zip ties, which I can just cl clip off at the end of the season. The real focus of this video is going to be how to shorten some pre-manufactured LED light strings so that they fit perfectly around your openings. So this window and these two garage doors all require different lengths and pre-manufactured LED Christmas light strings are made to power a set number of LEDs with 120 volts so that it doesn't use any resistors. These particular sets are th three sets of 50 LEDs in the string. In order to move any LEDs from that set, you have to make up for it with resistors. So I'm gonna show you how I determined what size resistors I needed for the amount of LEDs that I was removing, as well as how I shortened the string of lights. Okay, so I'm gonna use an online tool called ledcalculator.net. So this is a calculator that you can enter a supply voltage, which I know mine is 120 volts. You can enter each LED voltage drop. Now that we have to figure out a current rating and most LEDs are 20 milliamp rating. And my particular light strings have 50 LEDs per set. So now we need to just kind of throw out a value for voltage drop per LED. Uh, three volts is a good place to start. So I'll click design circuit. So we know that the light strings that I have power 50 LEDs with no resistors and it's 50 LEDs in series. So we can see here that we've got two sets that make up the 50. So um, we're, we're using a, a voltage drop that is too high. So I'm gonna drop this down to 2.5 volts per LED. And here we, we still have two strings, but you can see we're closer where um, the second set is just two LEDs and the top set is 48 LEDs. So we're getting closer. So I'm gonna drop to a 2.4 voltage drop. And here we can see all 50 LEDs in series. We just have the one set of 50 LEDs. And it's calling for just a one ohm resistor. So that's pretty close to zero resistance and the voltage drop through all 50 LEDs will consume that 120 volts. So for my set of lights, I'm pretty confident that it uses 2.4 voltage drop per LED. Now I need to determine how many LEDs I need to remove. So I did this by uh, attaching my light strings to the frames that I made and then counting how many of that set of 50 needed to be removed. On the set I'm gonna show you, I need to remove the last eight LEDs from the middle section of 50. And then the last section of 50, I'm just going to completely leave off as well. So I'm going to change this to 42 LEDs and design the circuit. So to replace those eight LEDs that I'm going to remove, I need to substitute a one kilo ohm resistor. Now I've got gobs and gobs of resistors, so I found the appropriate size that I needed. Uh, one of my other strings, I only removed five LEDs. And so you can see that one required a 620 ohm resistor. The set of lights around my window, I removed 14 LEDs. And you can see that required 1.8K ohm resistor. So you can use this tool to calculate what your resistance needs to be going forward. So let's go wire it up. Okay, so I'm removing eight LEDs total, and that's why I have my resistor. And we're going to cut off this one, replace it with this one, splice everything in here, and then we'll have a tail. So the one, I, the first wire I want to start with is the one that the resistor is going to go into. So on my tail, I'm going to find between the last two LEDs, which wire 
connects between the bases. So you can see um, this wire here runs past the base. This wire here, this top one, runs past the base. So these two are the ones that I want to cut. So I'm going to cut this kind of long, just so I've got plenty to work with. And that's where I'm going to start. Now I'm going to come down here. And I want to find the same wire that connects between these two bases. So I've got one there. So this wire here goes and loops and goes into this base. So this is the one I need to cut. And of course I'm cutting it a little long so that I have plenty of room to work. Just so I don't get confused. I'm gonna cut this just a little shorter and then strip off just a little tiny bit from the edge. Now I've got my soldering iron here. I'm just gonna tin the end of this wire and then I'm going to take my resistor and I'm going to just leave a little, about a quarter inch tail on it and I'm going to tin that as well. Now, I'm going to just solder the resistor on. Now, I'm going to measure out how much heat shrink I need to cover that plus the other side joint. Put that off and we'll slide it over. Now I'm gonna leave just a, about a quarter inch on the other side. Put that, I'll go ahead and tin it. And now I wanna come down here to the wire with the female plug. So I'll just kinda of use the, the existing lights for spacing so I know how long I need to cut the wire. And so I need to cut it about right there. strip a small section and tin this one and now making sure we don't get our heat shrink too hot we'll solder these together cool it off a little Get our heat shrink and there we go. So for the other wires, I've figured out that the easiest way to do this is to clip them long, both of them, from both sides. And now we've got this section out of the picture. Now, you can try to identify which one needs to go to where and so forth, but I find it easier and faster to strip both and then I'll just at random pick two pairs, twist them together, twist the other two. Make sure they don't touch. I use this heat shrink and just slide it over like that. And now I'll just go plug the other side in. Here we go, gonna plug it in. All right, so those came on and they're great. But I, I unplugged them. I'm gonna show you if I switch these and I do these two wires together, and these two wires together. Now, once I plug the other end in, this section won't light up. So 
you're too low, you can't see the, the, the other section lit up. And so you can see those there are lit up until it gets to the start of these 42. So I got lucky the first time and it worked. Um, I just need to swap those two wires, solder them together, and we'll be good. Okay, so I'm gonna swap these two. There we go. And let me go plug it in just to make sure everything's good. So they just brightened up. There was one bulb somewhere, or one LED, that was a little loose in the socket. And I was just getting partial voltage through it. So that's it, guys. Um, pretty simple process. Obviously, the manufacturers are not gonna recommend that you do this. Um, they design their, their light strings for them to be UL listed and be safe so they don't burn anyone's house down. Um, I understand those risks. I'm willing to take those risks. Um, I'm gonna leave it up to you whether you wanna do it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below. Um, all light strings are a little different. The C9s that I installed on my roof, uh, they use different voltage drop LEDs. And so the resistor values are going to differ from one string to the next. Um, but if you like what I do, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Uh, I have a lot of video ideas uh, coming up. And until next time, we'll see you later.